Keller Williams. It's Paul with KWU. And I'm Ian with the Compliance Group over in Product Management. And today we're going to learn how to sync the data between an opportunity and its DocuSign room. Now, what does that mean, Ian? Yeah, so uh, it's been a highly, highly requested feature, and I know we've all been very comfortable with Dot Loop and the amount of work we've done with with our seven-year relationship with Dot Loop. So we want those same functionalities of the information we enter on our platform to populate. And and if we have all this information in the same ecosystem, you know, why is it not talking to to the other applications and what we're going to do is we have our information on our opportunity. We want to send that over to DocuSign so then that information can go into all of those forms that, that we've been working on tagging. So if, if, I, if I'm orienting myself real quick, um, we've already logged into command. We've already got some information to our opportunities. Now we're looking at an opportunity details page right now. So Paul, tell me what's going on uh, with this opportunity. So with this opportunity, we have all of our details, like Ian just said. You can always you know, go to the pencil icon. We can edit any of this information at any time. We also have the Documents tab, mm -hmm. which is where we can actually create our DocuSign room. So we have some initial details that we filled in. Mm -hmm. um, why don't we go ahead and create the DocuSign room, take a look at what pulled over, and then we can go back and see how we can sync data back and forth. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Let's select a checklist and we'll, we'll start from room creation, see what goes over, edit some things, and, and see what's been updated. That's right. So remember, you, uh, whether you, you're using DocuSign or dot loop, you want to make sure to create that room or that loop from within the opportunity by clicking start a transaction. Well, you will need to go to settings and connect those accounts first. So I see, I see that we have multiple, um, multiple document providers uh, attached. Let's go ahead and select DocuSign yep. and see what information will go over. So right, right away, um, this is a team opportunity. If, if we want to just jump back to the opportunity details, let's figure out why that pop-up happened. So we have Nicole Burton as the owner, and then we have uh, Irene Murphy as an assignee on it. So if we go back over, what, what we're saying is there's two slots, listing agent one and listing agent two. Now, Paul, you're, you're Nicole Burton in this situation. You're my rainmaker. Uh, are you the agent one or agent two on this opportunity? Is there a hard and fast rule? Uh, there's not a hard and fast rule, honestly. I mean, the rainmaker on a team opportunity will always be the owner, but maybe Irene Murphy is the agent that's taking lead on this and really working with those clients. So Irene Murphy could be listing agent one if possible, you know, depending on how your team is set up and how you're actually going to work the opportunity. Awesome. So, so this is important to understand assignee management and it'll come into play as we start building on more and more functionality um, to DocuSign and get things on, on privileges and access tightened down. So this could happen where Nicole Burton, she's the rainmaker, and she's actually uh, on the other side of the opportunity. So, so legally, she, she really shouldn't see these, um, these transactions or these documents to give an unfair advantage. So let's flip back over to the Documents tab. We'll, we'll start a transaction, and instead of, of listing both Nicole Burton and Irene Murphy, uh, let's just select Irene Murphy. Okay. Uh, so hit confirm and sync. You don't need to put in that second agent. It's just an option, but you do mandatorily need at least one agent to make a transaction happen. That's right. So we'll confirm and sync. This is creating our DocuSign room as we speak. And we just got a new DocuSign room that's now synced to that opportunity that we ju were just in. Awesome. So if we pop over to the details page, let's see what came in. Now, this is a really important page in DocuSign because as we have forms that we're sending off for completion using envelopes, um, the details that we add to this page are actually going to autofill in those forms based on the labels. Awesome. So uh, over on the command side, I had my seller one and seller two already added into the details. Uh, we have 
the, the name, the phone number comes in as the business phone automatically, and we also have an email address. If they have an email associated, that will pull in. So this information will then populate, as you said, to those pre-tagged forms and should start um, filling out all that information kind of for you so, so we're not doing double work. That's right, and if we would have gone into contacts and added multiple phone numbers, added uh, physical addresses, that would have also populated in as well. Awesome, so I'm curious, we mapped one agent. Um, what, what information came over for that agent? Yep, so from this agent, we have the name, we have the business phone, and company address and all that good stuff. Um, so that did auto-populate, um, and that came from our uh, agent profile. Awesome, so this is a, a fairly new feature, and we mapped some of this uh, as, our, as our best guess. So if, if anybody has any questions on the, uh, the, the correct mapping or anything like that, uh, there's gonna be an article that's written saying, okay, this is, this is where that information's coming from, and uh, basically understanding, you know, is this the legal entity address or is this the doing business as company name. So mm -hmm. that, that's something that we've been working with market centers in understanding, but that's where that information's populating over. Okay. So let's, let's go switch back to command and let's start editing some things. So um, we can go over to our details page and we can start filling out some of these uh, contract dates. So let's, let's fill in these contract dates and just see what's gonna come over. All right, we'll set a close date as well. Um, let's see, what else can we fill out here? Uh, let's go, let's, let's add in all these dates, see which ones map over, and kind of just work through this stuff together. So there's, there's appointment date, uh, appointment schedule, appointment date, agreement one. Not all these, these date fields are, are really that relevant to our contracts, but some of them will pull in, and sometimes uh, we'll have DocuSign probably be that, that source of truth. But for the purposes of data sync, we always want to be pushing the information from command over to DocuSign. So command is the source of truth. Uh, you don't want to correct things in DocuSign and then sync the data because it'll push that data over from command to DocuSign each and every time. So it's not gonna be bi-directional because that would be confusing on which one is the source of truth. Absolutely. So let's save this general information down and let's add in a, a listing. Absolutely, so you can go to select from listings at the top of the opportunity. Um, by default, your listings will show up in this list, but what if you're working on the buyer side? You can also use this dropdown to see all listings and We'll let it load up for just a second. No worries, we're caught down here in the basement. So. <laughs> and you can use the search to find exactly what you're looking for. We'll go ahead and select a listing and it pulls in all of that listing data. Awesome, so, so there's information. This came from the listing. Uh, this came from the MLS up here uh, and the top right, select from MLS. The other area, property details, uh, that got pulled in, but there's also more information that the MLS has that's not directly represented in the property details. So uh, let's, depending on the MLS, it might be more information and might, might be less, but let's go over now that we've changed a lot of this information, uh, let's go to our documents tab, sync the transaction to DocuSign and see what's going on, uh, what, what changed, what's new. It does give you a message to say that information synced. So now we can go to DocuSign. We'll just give it a refresh. And notice our listing information pulled in. Um, if we look at listing details, we have some more information, contract amount, expected close date, actual close date. Um, so we did get some information that pushed through here. Awesome. So. So in, in understanding what's gonna be the most updated, you know, is it gonna be the MLS and you're changing those prices or are these prices changing in the contracts where you're directly editing on DocuSign? Sometimes it's gonna be right, sometimes it's not gonna be as accurate. But what we did was we pulled in this address information, 
some other pieces of information like year built, depending on the MLS, it will pull in. But we also had um, those contract pieces of information come over directly, the listing amount, and finally, just the, the bedroom bathroom. So there's a good amount of information that, that's been added. If any of this information is wrong or, or not the right types of information, we're, we're gonna keep fine tuning this process and trying to make this as seamless and as easy as possible. So um, Paul, just give me a quick summary. What, what did we see here? So we saw that we created the DocuSign room in an opportunity. Um, we put a few details in, we created, um, uh, that pushed over when we created that room. But then we went back to the opportunity, we added more detail, and then we did the actual data sync. Now, one thing I will add to this, if there is something incorrect or information that you wanna add in, because these fields do automatically um, update the forms that you have in your DocuSign room, you can always go to the edit button at the top right of the page and correct or fill in any of the gaps that you have here. Awesome. So. Um, I think data sync, which is what we call it on, on our end, um, but it's really just transferring information from command over to DocuSign um, and making sure that, that if we have information captured on our platform, we're, we're gonna make it a seamless experience over to the document provider. Absolutely. So where, where would I go to, to get a hard copy to share with my friends? Absolutely, so what you wanna do is on any page in command, go to the top right, click on the question mark, click Kellowings University and use the search. Awesome. Well, I, I think that's everything we had to cover on, on data sync and, and transferring data. Looking forward to the next live stream. Absolutely. Y'all have a great day. Thanks everyone. Guys, there is so much more to learn. Check out these videos for more information.